But these functors, they have a rep uh, reputation for being maybe too abstract or hard to understand. And what I would like to show you today is that they're actually extremely useful for live coding music. And I, I would also like to put this in a slightly broader context. So um, we want expressive programming languages uh, that allow us to express in very little code very interesting things. Now, when we live code music, uh, we desperately need these kinds of languages because as the music is running, we have only very little time to express interesting things. So I would say that uh, live coding music uh, is not only interesting uh, uh, as music, it's not only pleasant, it's also a testing ground uh, for how expressive your language is. And I think uh, most of the talks at Farm have been in Haskell, and this, uh, I think, has some significance. Anyway, so in this broader context, um, uh, I would like uh, to demonstrate, uh, so I'm going to explain the functors, and I would also like at the same time uh, demonstrate two projects I've been working on. So the first one is called Hyper Haskell, the strongly hyped Haskell interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> so it's essentially a Haskell interpreter with a notebook or worksheet interface that gives you graphical output. And uh, I think this is very useful for live coding. And the second one is the thing that does the music. Uh, it's a library, uh, I've called it Sinoidal. Um, so there's, you know, there's a, C, a sinusoidal wave shape, but there's also a sinoidal wave shape. Uh, I like theoretical physics, and uh, sinoidal waveforms are uh, solid tonic solutions to the cortex degrees equations, and I, that's why I think it would be a good name for library. Anyway, but first, uh, first about the functors. So you probably all know what a functor is in Haskell. So a functor is a container type, I've called it small f. And uh, it supports an operation um, which, if I have a function which maps uh, element types A and B to each other, then I can also apply it to containers. So I have a container of A's, then I can apply it uh, to the function, and I get a container of B's. And uh, here I've, uh, it's commonly called fmap. Here I've used the infix notation uh, a dollar, so the supply, uh, the supply operation in, in brackets, so it's a fancy apply operation, probably. And further to this, you've probably also heard about monads. I'm not going to say anything about them here. They should be uh, well known, I hope. But I would like to uh, motivate, introduce applicative functors because they may not need be as well known. So um, the simplest example, or the most illuminating example for me at least was uh, uh, applicative factor is for lists. So I have we have this function called zip with. It takes a function in which with two arguments. Uh, uh, so a and b are the arguments, and it gives back a CE. And now we want to apply it to lists. So we want to take two lists and combine them with this function. So that if we have, for example, a list one two three and a list four five six, uh, we combine <laughs> one and the three with plus say, and uh, yeah, we get five and uh, 2 plus 5 is 7 and so on. So that's the way we want to combine lists. We want to arrange them first element paired with the first element and then apply this plus operation. Um, so that's the Zibwood function, well known from the prelude. And the question is, of course, uh, well, can we generalize this? What about Zibwood 3? So it takes a function with three arguments, A, B, C, and gives back a D, and we want to implement this. So we can certainly do this. And the question then is, well, what about zip 4 and zip 5? Is there a general pattern behind this? And the answer is uh, yes. And so uh, it actually took a while to figure this out, but uh, the, the key insight is to look at the following function. So this is not obvious that you should look at this function, but uh, let me say here that you should look at this. Uh, I've called it, uh, it's called apply. Uh, it has a funny symbol, so the star is a bit like uh, an application, and uh, brackets uh, for, well, it's fancy. And the idea is that uh, you take a list of functions from A to B, and you have a list of A's, and then you pair all the functions with all the elements, and you apply them, and you get a new list. So, and uh, the, the insight is that if you take this as a primitive, then you can implement zip with three very easily. For in, uh, so it goes like this. So say we have a function of three arguments, a list axis, a list yx, a list zx. 
then if I perform f map of this function f onto the list axis, so if I'm here, what will I get? Well, so a function of three arguments is actually a function that takes one argument and returns a function, in this case of two arguments. So what I get is from the types f applied to fx, uh, to x is a list of functions from b to c to d. Now if I, so I have a list of functions, so I can try to apply it with this uh, fancy star operation. And if I apply it to ys, then I get, just by looking at the types, I get something that goes from c to d. And if I do it again with zs, then by looking at the types, I get a list of d's. So as far as the types are concerned, this expression seems to be, uh, at least in the right type, as zip with three. And uh, uh, if you think about it some more, you will find that this is actually also, uh, uh, also has the denotation of zip of three. So it works out from the type, and this is zip of three. <coughs> okay. And so the general form of this pattern is an applicative functor. It's a container type. I've called it small f. It supports two operations. The second one is the supply operation I've already mentioned. And the first one is uh, you have a single element and you can put it in the container, so you get a container with a single element. Um, and this is needed for a couple of laws. So applicative functors like monads uh, satisfy certain laws. One of them is that if I take an element x, I put it in a big container using pure of x, and I use the apply operation on some other container uh, access, then it's the same as performing this fmap operation. So every applicative functor is also a functor and this is the law that relates them in some way. And uh, for lists, it turns out that the result of pure must be an infinite list. And the reason being that uh, if I want this uh, equality, this law to hold in the right hand side, so if x has uh, like, let's say, length 7, then the right hand side has length 7. Uh, but uh, this pure of f must be length at least 7, because uh, this apply operation or zip with it cuts short uh, the list. So the smallest length of the list uh, is the length of the result. So pure x ha must have length at least 7. And so on, and so it must be infinite. Uh, right, so that's something to keep in mind for later. And there's another issue which I've neglected. Um, so lists in Haskell, so they are in, in, they are an instance of the type class applicative, but what I've just showed you, the apply operation is not the one you would get from the instance. Um, if you want to get the apply operation I've just talked about, about zipping, you need uh, to use this new type called zip list. So it turns out that lists as, a, as an abstract data type support at least two different applicative functions. So there are many different applicative structures on this. These are two of them. So the first one comes actually from the monad. And in a moment, we, we will see that the same happens for music, actually. OK. Any questions so far? Everybody still on the screen? <laughs> OK. OK, so now I would like to talk uh, about music, or uh, it's uh, um, the data type has, has gone by the name Temporal Media. I think it was uh, introduced by Paul Rudak. And um, so it's an abstract data type. Um, let's call it media. A is some kind of element. So uh, a piece of music uh, is essentially something that goes on in time. So let's draw a time axis. The horizontal axis is time. And on the vertical axis, uh, let's put values, for instance, no, so then a piece of music could be uh, keys on the piano, and I play them for a certain amount of time. So I have intervals starting here, so here I start playing this note, here I lift the finger from the key, and so on. So this is how you can represent music, and this, uh, or, um, I actually allow overlapping intervals. So this piece of music can have uh, different notes playing at the same time, time, as you see from the overlapping intervals here. And uh, of course, 
we would like to make it polymorphic, so it doesn't have to be music and notes that are inside these intervals. We can use uh, any values of type A here. I've drawn an example where it's integers. So the lowest intervals, they're tagged with the value 0, the second ones with the value 1, and so on. OK, and so, so the most important thing about this um, temporal media data type is a function called uh, two intervals, which takes this type and returns a collection, I have to note that it's said here, of intervals tagged with values. Um, uh, the, that's, the, that's the basic idea. The question is, is that all there is to it, to a media data type? And so if I know that I have two elements x, or two temporal media x and y, um, are they equal if they contain the same intervals? And there are actually different, uh, different choices for that. That's why I'm putting it here. So one choice, so that's the question. If the intervals are the same, are the types of like, values actually the same? I can impose that, and then I suddenly obtain a media data type which is just isomorphic to the result of the intervals. So I've taken the liberty of using some more mathematical notation here. So the first variant of the media data type is a uh, composition of functors. Um, first I pair with the intervals and then I put a set around it, uh, around this type A. So this would be the first variant and it satisfies the fact, or it satisfies the property of the intervals are the same, the data types are the same. But there's also a second variant. Uh, if I include for the piece of music a duration, so, uh, so I play a couple of notes on the keyboard, say, and then after five minutes I'm done. But I could also say, OK, I play the same couple of notes on the keyboard, and after three minutes, I'm done. And this total duration, if I put it also in the data type, I get different values, even though they contain the same intervals. So this duration is useful if I want to um, play music in sequence. So first, for the first time, five minutes, uh, I play something, then I play something else, and I need to know how long I'm going to play this. I might have silence in there, but that's part of the data type, so to speak. And uh, if we use, uh, if you take this duration into account, if you add it to the data type, we essentially pair the first variant with an additional time datum. So we, so the, so the second variant of media uh, is a composition of the first pair with intervals, then take, then take uh, sets of that, and then pair with an additional time. OK. So this, this is the data type. And now I would like to explain uh, the functors, applicative and also monad on this. And actually, I would like to explain why they're useful. So uh, when, when live coding a piece of music, uh, uh, one might want to go about it in a way of separating concerns. So for instance, I first think about the harmony. So I'm thinking about, oh, I want to play an A minor chord. So it has the notes A, C, E in it, and they play, all played at the same time. So this is what this diagram represents here. And to make it more interesting, I also want to put a rhythm uh, to this harmony. So I have another value, let's call it rhythm, and uh, it, it uh, the values in the rhythm are unimportant, so that's why I've used the unit type. And the important thing here is the intervals in the length. So this rhythm goes like the, 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 and so on. So it's an interesting rhythm. And I, now I want to combine these two. And the point is that this is exactly what the applicative functor allows us to do. So there is, there is an apply operation uh, that gives us this result where I have this harmony, and every note in this harmony is played in this rhythm. And the rule for the apply operation is this. Um, I take every interval from the first argument. I pair it with every interval from the second one. And then I take all the intersections of intervals. So I have three intervals paired with three. I get nine intersections. So these are the nine intervals down there. And then I also apply the functions. And the answer is that uh, this actually satisfies all the applicative functor laws. And one way to see this very quickly is to 
recognize, well, that pairing with a monoid gives you an applicative functor. And Z is a monad and also an applicative functor. And taking the composition of two applicative functors is again an applicative functor. So now we just choose the monoid properly, the monoid of intervals. And in this case, uh, we just intersect intervals. So this is the applicative functor uh, on this uh, first variant of the media data type. And it does something interesting musically. And uh, though we do have to be a bit careful about what exactly the interval type is. I didn't specify it. Um, the rule here is that intervals start at some time uh, which is greater than zero. And so zero is the beginning of everything. And they can go on to infinity. And the reason they go on to infinity is basically the same reason why uh, the pure value for lists is an infinite list. So pure of x would be an interval that starts at zero and goes on infinitely long. OK. And now there's also a musically interesting monad structure. So uh, well, what does it do? Um, for instance, take a piece of music. Let's call it music. Uh, it has not C, D, E. And um, also an interesting rhythm. And we want to embellish this piece of music. So, so there's a, uh, an embellishment called a mordant. So I have this note, and I play a note slightly higher, and I go back again. So instead of uh, playing ah, I go ah. Um, right, so that, that's what it sounds like. And if I want every note in this piece of music to be embellished by a mordant, uh, uh, the statement is that, well, I can do this with the monadic one. So the, mon the mordant is a function. It takes a note value. It outputs these intervals as shown here. So first a note, then a bit higher, then a note again. And if I take the monadic lines, th this means that um, it goes like this. So for every interval in the first volume, I apply the function to the volume. I shift the beginning of this to match the beginning of the interval. So for this interval, I shift here. For this interval, I shift here. And for the third interval, I shift all the way to, to the end. And then I also have to take the intersection of intervals. So this infinite region is going to be cut short by the end of the interval. And the claim is that this uh, actually satisfies all the non bounds. And there's also a simple way to see this. So the first variant, uh, I can also understand it as a, a writer T monad transformer applied to the set monad. And now for a writer monad, I need some monoid. And again, choosing the monoid cleverly, we get a good result. And in this case, uh, uh, the idea was to be in the second intervals, but we also shift them. So the first interval, no, the second interval, it's shifted such that um, uh, it starts at the beginning of the first interval. And uh, if you think about it for a while, you will find that this monoid has a, a left and a right unit, which is precisely the interval starting at zero going to infinity. So you get the monoid loss. And you get something uh, musically interesting. So now here's, here's the point uh, where we don't quite get the monoid. Otherwise, I, I would have called the demo monads and uh, music. Uh, I could only call it fungus <laughs> and music. So if we add the duration, which is useful for, for combining them in sequence, um, then we pair with another time value. And I don't know how to turn this result into a monad. So the composition of two monads is not necessarily a monad again. And that's why the whole thing fails. But it still gives us a suggestion for an interesting uh, musically interesting uh, operation. I've decided to call it a Dorn, and it's essentially a bind operation with two arguments switched. That's how it's useful uh, in life coding. Okay, so much about the features and uh, explaining how it all, all connects. Now I'm going to uh, life code to show you what can be done with this. Okay, so I I'd like to show you this, this hyper Haskell thing I wrote. So it's uh, 
It's only close, so you can download it on GitHub. I hope it's big enough. Um, so it's, you can write down a couple uh, of language. Let me get to the mixer before you make some. Sorry? I turned everything up, so I just want to make sure you don't. Yeah. Ah, okay, so I'm going to explain what, what you see here. So this is, uh, this is one of the worksheets. You can save and open them, and, well, I guess. And that's kind of stunning. You can load source code files, you can import modules, and it worked. And um, uh, we can type in expressions. So let me just uh, let me just type in an interesting expression. So I showed you uh, a couple of buttons. Uh, So it takes a while to load the graphics library. So this is using Brent Yorgis diagrams library. Okay, so we execute an expression and we directly see some graphics. Um, I thought this is more, this is the GHCI I would like to have, so I made it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now I can, can go back and edit a few couple of, of more things. And I, this was actually very helpful for debugging the uh, applicative instance. So I tried to do, prefer, I tried to write in a performant or more efficient variant and I got it totally wrong and then I draw these diagrams and I uh, found the mistake. So this is very useful. Uh, but uh, you actually want to hear something? So I'm, uh, I'm going to use this as a MIDI instrument, uh, no, as a MIDI keyboard in a way. It sends out MIDI signals to some program running in the background. Um, now I have a couple, couple of instruments uh, that I send notes to by specifying a MIDI channel, so I've set up an interesting thing and already prepared a couple of empty empty spots and now um, we start to record progression. Baseline for for bass notes, and uh, now I want to play them in a nice rhythm. That's where the apply operation comes in. Okay, I want to be faster.
show you the base? Please. Yeah, is it possible to do that now with the display? Yeah, you've got the timeline, which is the abstract thing. I'm wondering if you could do it as a musical notation. Ah, like oh, sheet music. Sheet music. Like sheet music, thank you. Okay, ah, so it's not, uh, it takes infinite amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it possible already? It just, uh, it, it's, no, I haven't done it. Okay. It's possible. That's what I've asked. Yeah. Yeah. How did you compare the title? Um, ah, um, so, so I heard a talk about Tidal once I, and I wanted to use it. And um, they, they also had some applicative functors, and, uh, uh, but uh, the, the applicative laws were not quite fulfilled. So we had a discussion, and uh, they actually showed. So I could present, produce an example where the applicative laws were not satisfied. And the argument was okay, so we do, do music, so we don't care so much about the loss, so, which I think is a fine <laughs> argument, but uh, it, it kept me from using Tidal, so I, <laughs> so I thought uh, it, it might be worth looking for loss. And I think it's important, and I think we thought it's uh, worth well. uh, There's one quick uh, side question. So, which monad laws does your adorn function break? Um, um, all of them. <laughs> Maybe one more? Uh, well, oh. okay. Have you thought about the generate, uh, generation of some lyrics so we can have a karaoke here? Or, or Do you guys want to set up karaoke? Like, you can generate music. Can you generate also text so we can like combine text and music and like make a proper song and like sing karaoke? Ah, well, I haven't thought about it. It might be possible. Well, I mean, English grammar is rather simple, so... <laughs> 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 I, I will leave this to future work, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. 